Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and the cast, and business, and writers, and the do-it-yourself guys. Money and violence in the building. Money thank and you, violence. Thank you, thank uh, you. Introduce yourself to the audience. I mean, obviously, a lot of people know. Let's not assume. Some people have heard about the phenomenon, maybe only seen a few episodes. So let's kind of start at the beginning with the Money and Violence brand. Introduce yourself. Okay, my name is uh, Moses Verno, better known as Rafe. Uh, I'm the writer and creator of the web series Money and Violence. Yeah, my name is Ray. I play the character Miz. And I'm Styles. I do all the management and the business w w along with Teddy. Now, Chris, is uh, Styles has been behind the scenes for a long time, since the beginning. A lot of people didn't mm -hmm. know that. And you also have a, a music background. You've done some uh, hit songs out here for people. Like, yeah, who, man. like who run through that oh, resume? Oh, man. Everybody. Uh, from uh, Trey, from Christina Aguilera, 50, LL, Murder, Mano, what Jim did, Jones, uh, so many people. And what part did you play with that? What the, uh, you, yeah, with production. production. Oh, yeah. oh, production, just beats. Oh, yeah, beats and stuff, yeah. Oh, man. wow. I, most people know my work from um, 50 Cent, man. I probably got like six, seven singles from Disco Inferno, Window Shopper, In My Hood, Amusement Park, uh, Hands Up, Close to Me, a bunch of records with 50. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah. I just knew that you were run, running, running the money and violence oh, situation, no, which is man. enough. Uh-uh. So now, uh, Rafe, as I call you. Yes, sir. Um, Do you go by Rafe now in the street? Or are you trying Forcefully, to... Forcefully, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Has that become a thing where it's like, yo, Rafe, what every, up? Yeah, like, every, my name's every, Moses. Bro. Everybody, nah, everybody calls me Rafe. I just leave it at that. Like, it doesn't really bother me, you know? It's, I have no uh, identity crisis as um, far as myself. You guys are... You guys are, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are at a, a, a nice crossroads, but also a difficult one, too. And we talked about this, right? Money and violence was something yes, that did. the people in Brooklyn specifically exalted, and it got a lot of steam on YouTube and became a phenomenon because of... You know, people who live in Brooklyn, seeing their neighborhoods and hear, and seeing familiar faces and stories being told about what was going on in the streets in Brooklyn. And it was called Money and Violence. And it got talked about on the Internet. And then it's how many views now? Uh, now I think it's it's uh, over 26 million. Over 26 True. million views. Wait, for, the, for what? For the whole series? For the whole series, the entire series. So each episode is about a million. A million and a half each, yeah. Wow, fantastic. Um, and I mean, we hear it in the industry, every artist that watches it, you know, people are really pulling for you guys. And now you have some major things on the table. We yes, want to tell do. the people that, and this is a testament to your fan base, that they've now gotten you guys in this brand to a certain place. So you got some announcements. Yeah, very much so. Uh, we just signed a deal with Tidal. So season two will be airing on title. You see the Rock Nation flag? That's right. Yeah, big yeah. Rock Nation. Give it a minute. Give big it a minute. Hope. I'm in the building. <laughs> um, also as well, we just uh, inked the deal with Lionsgate Film. Now, let's start with the title thing. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Now you have a deal with title. What happens? Well, title basically has the uh, seven-day exclusivity, so it's going to come out on title first. But, you know, we structured the deal in a way that to not alienate our day one viewers. So they'll also have the opportunity to view it on a later date as well. And this is season one, including season two? How does it work? This is season two. Season two. And uh, season one is currently on title now, so you can also check it out there. Um, and then what's the Lionsgate deal? What's that about? Uh, the Lionsgate deal is a deal that is structured to get us to premium cable network by season three. So hopefully, you know, you'll be seeing our faces on HBO, Showtime, Stars, Netflix, something, something like that. Yeah. Um, big checks, big checks. We, I mean, you know, I, you know, that's my thing, counting other no. people's money. I ain't getting, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what you and I have in common. <laughs> I always want to know about the check. Not really. You know, one thing when Mo talked to me and Teddy from the beginning was he wanted to maintain as much control as possible and much own, uh, and as much ownership as possible. So we want to be able to look like the smartest people in the room when we went to the rooms. That's why we took so long to get the deals the way we had them because it was important not to sell off everything. Mm. And, you know, we rather take a little money now to get the big money later. That's right. And we just want to make sure that season two looks better than season one and make sure that he didn't have as much work to do on season two. Now, for But those, still has the creativity. Has and still has the, the creativity. Right. So we just right. did little deals where we still retain all our ownership of the situation, but got enough money to shoot season two. And that's why we did the crowdfunding campaign too. So we got to thank the people for that also. How, how much did you guys end up raising when we, we all, everybody promoted the crowdfunding campaign? How did that go? Um, we, and, what were the, and what were those funds for? We hit 91% we hit of goal. Uh, we had dropped the goal from 250000 to to 100000 uh, And that money was basically to pay the cast because what was happening with the deals were, you know, a lot of people don't realize 
what the budget is for a television series. It's not cheap at all. You know, um, so being that we were being compared to all these shows like Empire Power, and that was just off a of storyline alone. So I just felt that we really needed to level the playing field as far as production is concerned. So that money actually went for the payment of the cast because I didn't want my cast to work another season for free. And and so for those that don't know, there was four individuals when I went in was a part of it, and you guys invited me in. I appreciate you. Um, it was literally you were an actor mm -hmm. and a film and holding the camera. Mm -hmm. And writing mm -hmm. and doing the editing. Yes. As long with you were holding the microphone, I think. Right. Shout editing. to the Jamaican spot. What was that lady's Nikki. name? Nikki. Nikki. Nikki at the yeah, Nikki, yo, man, I love her, Food, man. She's yeah. great. Food's amazing over there. So now you're able to step away. Now you hire people to edit, people to do different things. Are you keeping it in the family still like yeah, you did before? So what we did was, what we did was, we hooked up with uh, Michael Hershon and Charles Soot over at Ish, and we got a production company to shoot for us. So okay. no longer he has to worry about holding the camera, shooting, and editing. <clears throat> He's going to be, you know, overlooking overlooking everything. everything. But now we have our own production company, and Michael and Suit, Charles Suit helped us get the deal with Lionsgate. So we did the deal with Lionsgate, and then Chaka from Rock Nation, along with Teddy, helped us get the deal. When me and Teddy got, helped us get the deal over at uh, Title, And we, we took those funds and put everything back into shooting season Seasons. two. So it wasn't a deal to get our money rich. It was to stabilize the organization. St st stabilize everything. And then season three is the big play. And then, you know, go to network TV. Because uh, Lionsgate wouldn't even touch this if it didn't think it was going to go on television. And then we got a dope showrunner. We're not going to name right now Hollywood showrunner that's coming aboard to help us with the show. And what does that mean? What's a showrunner do? Showrunner makes the handles everything. The overall pulling of the whole shit together. Ian was our showrunner at, oh, okay, at for our VH1 uh, show. So he's make sure the script is where it needs to be, and everybody knows what they're supposed to do. And we hit the deadlines. Here's where we have to go, and here's going to be involved this episode. Um, you need to you reach out to this guest star, and blah 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 blah, and does that runs? Yeah, the show. So it, you know, it was more of it's more about getting our business tight. It's not really running like Mo would tell me all the time. Yo, Styles is not about the money. We never chasing the money. The money, if we do everything it's we gotta do, regardless. it's gonna come regardless. I gotta tell you, that's so, such a good thought. That's such yeah. a very smart way to think. And to be honest, it's not common. In hip hop, like you know, what I mean, a lot of people in hip hop are cheap. We just talked to Tory Lance about it right now. Like, I'm selling a CD and I'm demanding you give me the five dollars for the CD instead of realizing the importance of giving people the music. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of times exposure is more important than money. You understand? Like, money is something. You know, people say uh, money makes the world go round. I'm like, no, people's dreams do. It just so happens we get money in the process of achieving our dreams. You know, so with us, that's how it's always been. It's like, look, let's put in the work. Let's fall in love with the journey, and we'll be at the destination before we even know it. I, you know what I like about Rafe? He literally, and I, I wasn't in on the last interview, but I was listening to it, and I was like, who is the random old Jewish dude who's in that room right now. And not only is his voice tone and texture that of an old Jewish man from Brooklyn, but what you say also, like, you have an interesting uh, wiseness about your, or wisdom about your demeanor. Thank you, thank you very much. I mean, I've lived a uh, very eventful life. Do you want me to give a you a good, you, should have, you want a Jewish last name? You should be, you should be Rafe Rothstein. His when you first call, name is Moses. Hey, I listen, know, listen. I know. You know, they do the draft. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, What's we're up? taking him. They taking me? Oh, you taking <laughs> you taking yeah. Nah, fuck that. You can't get traded. Nah, I like him as a prospect. I nah, like him as a prospect. I'm taking Moses. stand up to the Jews, tell you I got you. I'm on both sides. Say hey, no now more. that you guys are super popular, have any like well-known actors reached out to you for cameos on the show? Oh, man, everybody. Ev mother everyone. Reached out for cameo cameos. Chris Gra even, Styles, grab him oh, up. Everybody and mother reached out for cameo cameos. But what we try to do is, he don't want to flood it. With uh, you don't want an empire. You don't want yeah. empire. We don't want to do that. We want to keep the uh, yeah, the authenticity, and we just want we just want it to to remain looking natural, natural. you know. So I don't want to I don't want to do anything that's forced. So even with Ebro, like when we did Ebro, Ebro, it was that was a business move too. We make sure that we align ourselves with the right people. Like we thought Ebro was dope. For Wait, you're saying you didn't have Ebro on just because you knew his acting <laughs> uh, credential? Yeah, and, absolutely. And not to cut not. you off, but I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. People love like that love, scene was. And it oh, he killed it. No, you yeah, didn't kill no, it. We had to make it had Thanks, to make guys. sense one, and then it had to make sense for our show. Like, all right, cool. Now we have a better relationship with Ebro now. So it's about lining with the right people. A lot of time, people just want to connect to anybody. We not with it for connecting anybody. We want to line up with the right people and give the right people opportunities. You know what I'm saying? At the right time, at the right moments. So there will be times later on that we might implement certain people, 
but it's gonna be for the right situation. Cause we have people that offer us money. He'd be like, "Yo, Styles, I ain't taking that." No. Yeah. I ain't taking oh, no money. Oh, I know people offer you money. And I bet some of those people offering you money are not the people you want to get starring in your show. <laughs> nope. Like, you yo, want... I'm an actor. You're like, I don't know if you're acting. <laughs> and the only reason, like, just go back to Ebo, the only reason was is because he showed us love in the beginning. My thing was like, yo, Mo, the dude just be showing us love. Like, yo, believe me, I know. And, I was sad and here. Was more, yeah, it was and more I didn't know about, what he was talking about at first. And he was one of the first people, like, to kind of like, yo, I get it. And that was dope, because so many people were saying, like, in the beginning, nah, I ain't, I ain't messing with those dudes. And then when it got hot, Everybody started calling. Yeah, I know. I feel bad because I was one of them. <laughs> he, he showed was. me the first time. He was like, like, yo, my man. He was like, yo, everyone in the hood. <laughs> no, we, we, we had a whole saying because of this. Yes. This and was hot in the hood. Shit in the the hottest shit in the hood. That so he started saying it's the hottest shit in the hood. I'm like, yo, Breeze, you're saying everything's the hottest shit in the hood. <laughs> so we sat there and he showed it to me and it was just on in the background. I was like, it looks cool. But, you know, obviously at first you could tell that it was yeah. a low budget operation. So I'm like, I don't know. Then time goes on a little bit. Maybe got to episode six and the conversation's growing. Mm -hmm. and, he and, and I saw, I watched his part. And I was like, oh, I was like, this shit reminds me more of Shata's than it does some <laughs> whack shit that people are just throwing together. Yeah. Like. And well, I started to get the vision. Too, like, you know, the cool factor for me was the fact that, A, you have some people who took initiative to, as Rafe put it, follow their dream, right? And say, yo, we want to shoot some shit that is reflective of us for us, right? And for people that live in the area that want to see our story be told on the lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I get that concept all anytime it's done, whether that's through hip hop, through film, even through fashion, right? I, get, I see it right away. Um, and then when I spoke to y'all, I understood that you had a level of business acumen and weren't just going to be like, let your shit fall apart. You wanted it to become something. And here we sitting here today and it's becoming something. Yo, we did five. You know what I'm saying? We did like five different deals, man. Like, people don't understand that. We took one situation and did five deals. What like, do you mean? What kind of deals? Well, I mean, they got they got title. Title. Yeah, Lions yeah. Gate. Lions Gate. We got uh Big Up the TI too, man. You didn't big oh, up yeah, T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We big got up Big Up the TI. He brought us out on the title concert. And, you know, we that Oh was, yeah, that's right. That's that right. That was gangster. Like, you know, he, so big up the TI, we got a situation with him with a coup. Cool, um so we have clothing. Clothing. Okay. We have a lot of other product placement situations. We got a record deal that's coming. We we just gotta choose what label we wanna and go to. And where you're gonna take music from the uh, episodes from and from the put episodes, it out. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we just and that was a smart thing that we did. We just took everything and kind of just we took everything and kind of just made it a, a real situation. And I just wanted him, you know, to understand like, yo, we wanna bring this shit somewhere totally else and do things outside of the norm. And he just kept putting he, you know, we argue every day, man. Every day. Every single day. I mean, every every day. day. Every day. But we got a great relationship because we all, he gets on my nerves. This, this, <laughs> well, that's because he's he a He doesn't dick. even talk. He's, no, he's a dick. Yeah. Let's just be honest. He's, nah, he's nah, I don't, like, I don't <laughs> like that. Nah, I don't like that. I'm an ass, I'm an asshole. Not a, nah. <laughs> Not a dick. Nah. <laughs> a dick, you can't deal with them. You don't want to be around them. No, you're right. You're right. No, but we, you oh, know, the character, we friends right after every argument. Yeah, like, but nah. the character he plays is not really far from who he actually is in his own mind. That's why when you see him, he always got the sunglasses on because he's like, yeah, I get to be who I am with money and body right, right about now. that. No, nah, but you know, but see, but, but that's that's the crazy thing about the dynamic of the, of the of the of the relationship between me me and Styles because, like, I mean, we go at it like mad dogs, you understand? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I know that he's in my corner. And if he's arguing with me, it's because he's trying to point out something to me that I don't see. Of course. See. You understand, like he's not here to hurt me. Like he always has good intentions, so that's why, like, we can go at it. And then at the end, it's just like, all right, man, we'll just do what you said we should do. Like, all right, so I got a few questions on. Big up the Jay Z too. Yeah, big up home. Yeah, yeah, big up definitely. You don't understand what it took us to get the title. You could probably tell that story, man. Uh, well, once you got Shaka in your corner. Yeah, once you got Shaka in your corner, yeah, Chaka, and she's man. from Brooklyn, like, <laughs> yeah, and she you know, sees what you're and that's, doing. And, and, that, and that's another thing too, man. Like, um. Like, a lot of people don't even realize that we took a loss to take the title deal. You understand where I'm coming from? But it wasn't about money. Like, it was about relationships, you know? And it was about good people. Yeah, it's about it's about good people. It's about relationships. And it's also, you have to understand, it's it's about home pride. Because I'm from Brooklyn, you understand? So, right. so it's like, who better to form a marriage with? And especially the fact that title's up and coming. You know, I'm all about us helping each other. Yep. 
you know. So, so at the end of the day, I think you know it's a perfect situation, man. And you know, look, Jay's one of those guys that if you're gonna work hard and you're gonna uphold your end of the bargain, you're gonna be where you're supposed to be. When we all agree you're gonna be there, he's gonna help you out. Yeah, and and you know, and we're not the type that's looking for anyone to hold our hands, man. Like, look, man, we get up on our own, our own initiative, and we do what we got to do. Yeah, we make our own place happen, and you know, then everybody, we make our own place happen, and then hopefully everybody just will follow suit right after behind that. So let's get to the storyline, Rafe. You writing right now? Scripts being written right now? Yes, yes, yes. How far along are you? Um, Cause last season one, you was literally filming and writing week. consecutive. Yeah. So yeah. are you doing that this time? No, no. You're gonna write the whole season. <laughs> yeah. Then shoot. Well, I'm. A, what we're gonna do is we're gonna. I'm gonna write about half the season. Okay. And the reason being is because, uh, a, a lot of the appeal of the storyline first season was the fact that we were able to stay relevant. Mm. You know, um, relevant to whatever was going on at that time. Especially in the neighborhood, yeah, too. Yeah, in the neighborhood. Uh, like, you know, we had the Labor Day parade, yeah. the day after Christmas, the parade, yeah, the Ever the Ever situation, you yeah. know. Because um, we want to touch on a lot of socially conscious issues as well with the show. Because I think that, that that was a big part of the appeal was the fact that, all right, yeah, it's money and violence, but at the end of the day, the violence is there because this is the harsh reality that people do live, you understand? But at the same time, it's still there to show you the humanistic side of people, and it's still there to show you that, you know, these people aren't animals. When there was a constant desire in every character to get better in life, mm -hmm. get a job, mm -hmm. um, you know, take care of their children and their loved ones, right? Exactly. Um, move out of a bad situation, which was the money aspect and the violence, obviously, because you have these individuals coming from uh, undesirable environment with limited means, clamoring and fighting over the same scraps sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a lot, you know. Like, me me and um Ray, who plays Miz, we have conversations at times, and I tell him stories about when I was younger, seven, eight, nine years old, and it's crazy that it took for me to become an adult to realize that the way that I grew up was not normal. You know, my daughter's 11 years old. She's never had a fight in her life. That's normal. <laughs> yeah, that's normal, you know? Yeah. And it's crazy because we grow up being programmed a certain way. Then once we get older, like, you know, we get 19, 20, where most of the world, these young children are now coming into their own, we have to deprogram ourselves so that we're able to deal with the world. Because the way that we grew up, you cannot deal with the world like that. You know? Not not that world. You're dealing yeah. with, because you're so used to dealing with it. Yeah, I'm talking world. about the real world exactly. Right. Because we don't realize our neighborhoods is what 0.1 percent of the world. Yeah. You know, but if that. some yeah, some of us never leave. So we figure that this that's slab of concrete uh, is the world. You know, yeah. but yo, yeah. that's what everyone is doing. Yeah. You don't even know every. You know, <laughs> exactly. You don't know the fuck everyone, everyone is. Yeah. So, are you the only writer? Are you the only yeah. one, or do yes. you take um like, will he come and like give us two cents and about his character and how it develops? I'm no, I'm I'm the only writer. Okay. Ray will That's come in and be like. Miz will be like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it like You'd be this. like, y'all, that's I, us. I just play my role, man, and that's it. <laughs> well, last time you heard, you said that you quit your job, and this is all that you do, right? Yeah, I had to quit so, my job. My face is on TV. <laughs> what with Miz? What, Ray, Ray, what was you doing before then? I was looking for Clyde on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all. Good answer. <laughs> Ray, are you investing in your craft now? Are you taking any acting classes to help you out, like to make yourself better as an actor? Yeah, we are. I'm taking classes. We all taking classes. Shout right out now. to Benny Boom too, who casted Ray in that uh, that Tink video for yeah, a million. Shout out to Benny. I appreciate. Benny's him. involved in helping you guys a little bit too. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like I, I I respect him a lot because he reached out to me and we stay in contact. Like he's not Hollywood. He's like one of big, he's a regular like, big dude. brother. He's like, I look at him like I look at you the same way. I'm like, nah, them, That's them my dudes they solid. Like if you doing what you're supposed to do, they they reached out to you. So salute to him. Rafe, what can you tell us about this upcoming storyline? Where's um, this? Where's this money and violence going? What can we look you forward can, to? Who's gonna get their wig pulled off? <laughs> what's you can happening? you you can expect for us to to go into backstory. You know, just to give you a better understanding of these characters, of why they are the way they are. Um, just you know, more more in depth, more in depth. Because season one was like an introduction to each character, just so you know you could know who you like, who you don't like. But now it's gonna go more in depth into the fiber of who these people are and why they're the way they well, are. Well, because you want to go back. 
and build up a little bit before you go forward and get the huge look at season three. Exactly. So you use season two to set up a bit so, before you go. Hold on, you notice you know that's how we know we made it. You know this the first time he was in the room with us, right? <laughs> Second time like, Well, and hold on real quick though, in all fairness, y'all had like seven fucking people the first time too. <laughs> I was like, God damn, they brought all of Brooklyn. It's cool, I'll sit in the other room. <laughs> Amber Rose hit you up. Oh, yeah, Amber was here that day, too, wasn't she? Yeah, look, he forgot. Well, she was hiding. I was protecting her in that room because she saw all of Brooklyn walking. It's because we had on black hoodies and black scullies. Everybody was afraid. He was like, who are these people? (laughs) (laughs) These are your friends? I'm still waiting for Ebro to get us some money, though, because Ebro been promising us some big money coming to our situation. We've been trying, man. I know you've been trying. Got to put him on the spot. Yeah, because Ebro, you know, we still still taking other deals. No, listen, I had to make sure because what was happening in the first season was everybody was getting... There was a couple of brands that was popping in there. It was like, yeah. right, they gonna allow, are, they, are they going to allow everyone in? Nope, nah, not this nah. season. Yeah, no. first season. Pay in this time. Look, I had <laughs> to wait. I had to play the back. I want to say this real quick to all, all, all the homies that we know. Look, season two is different. Don't blame us. It's business. Don't hit me up. Say, yo, throw this in there. You oh, got to yeah. speak to C-Styles. Well, and also, That's going to be tough conversations you're going to have to have. And this is tough, too. And that's why I said in the beginning of this conversation, you're at a convenient crossroad. Or inconvenient, however you want to look at it, right? Because you were exalted by your community, your friends, your family, and the world that you grew up around, and then it exploded into the rest of the world even, right? Uh, Now as you move in and things become more mainstream, more corporate, I've seen it a hundred times in hip-hop where the hood, if you will, is like, I ain't fucking with them. They corporate now. They making money. It's not the same. They've changed. Yep. How do you? How are you going to manage that? Well, I mean, the great thing with us is, no matter like Styles to tell you, I'm a very moral person, and no matter whatever decision I make, I always take the people into consideration. Um, also, as well, man, like I keep myself very accessible, and I think that's that's a big part because people see me everywhere. Like, Rafe, you in, you you in, you in the Ville? Rafe, you in East New York? What you doing out here? I live in Brooklyn. Live like, yeah, exactly. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. And I also do that because I believe that it's good for the kids, man. Because at the end of the day, like, I could sit here and I could say, the only human hands that could stop you are your own. I could say, look, man, it's po- it's all possible. But if you do not see me, then you're not going to think it's accessible. And it's not real. Yeah, it's not real, exactly. But when they actually see me and it's like, wow, this guy's really from where I'm from and he actually made this happen, then it lets them know that it, it's all possible. Man. And you really, and the crazy part is, and you guys did it yourself. I mean, really yourself. Yeah. Not saying you're going to do, do it yourself. You really did it yourself. Yeah, man. I mean, You know, if anything, these last... 12 to 15 months of my life at a point I always said that anything is possible but I don't know if I always truly believed it but at this point like this right here serves as a testament man because the most amazing thing is just to sit back and watch the world get to know you like it's amazing and you know what's crazy too Ebro like <clears throat> this, go back to your qu- original question turn we, the mic on turn we, the you back to your original question we don't let nothing we talk about everything we even do like what every two day, every other day a conference call between the main crew. Like we, yeah, we have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday conference call. So anything that needs to be said, if I need to get balked on, if somebody else needs to get balked on, we we have conversations within ourselves. So we don't really let other people get inside. And he good for that. Like somebody to call him right now and be like, yo, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And he'd be like, yo, Styles, why is this person calling me? Like. Talk to, and if somebody called me, like if I got a problem with a crew member, and, you know, some of the, some of the cast I, I just met. And I'll be like, yo, is it cool that I talk to that person before I just don't go ahead and go move? So we got a certain way we move. Like, we got principles with each other. We don't, we don't do that. Not a lot of people can't just come and just talk. If you have a conversation with me about some business, I'm going to go right back to him and repeat it word for word verbatim or take the email and be like, yo, son, this is what homeboy's saying. What do you want to do? And I think that's really big, a big part of how we communicate and how we we not get all the BS in there. I didn't want to curse. Go ahead, the BS in there. Go ahead, man. Let's grab the mic. We basically respect each other. Like, we take each other into consideration. Like, before any of us do something, you know, we don't think, like, is it cool? All right? And if we do something wrong and we, we also can speak about it and we can balk at each other and after that, it's like it never happened. But that's what you got to keep around you. You can't yeah. have yes men around you and you can't every everybody acting like it's all time because it's work to be done yeah i mean with our team there's no bosses you know like i always say look bro i work too hard to ever be a boss i am a worker (laughs) you understand what i mean and and at the end of the day like i feel that 
everyone should be able to speak their, their piece. I don't care how far we get. You know, I don't care how big this thing gets. There's never going to be a time that my man can't call me and be like, yo, I need to speak to you. Like, it is what it is. It's man. interesting what you just said, too. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it tells of your character a bit because in this era, being a boss oh. is yeah, everything. Cool, right? That's hearing, all anyone wants forever. to be is a boss, man. I'm, I'm it's, get, there's, there, people are embarrassed. I'm, embarrassed to be a worker and be in any way not the boss. It's like, oh, look at you. You I'm have to answer you, to someone. I'm going to tell you a funny story, right? So when we were running Cloud9 TV, which is our media company, we had come up, yo, look, we're going to work 9 to 5 every single day. We're going to meet up at the house. We're going to do what we got to do. So, so this guy here, he's like, yo. I want to be able to smoke during the day. I'm like, no, because if this was a job, no, if you want to smoke on your lunch hour, then fine. So he goes, what? I'm the boss. I'm, I'm, no, what he said, he said, yeah, I he said was we like, work for ourselves. He was like, we work for ourselves. <laughs> How am I bossing? I said, okay, but what are you the boss of? Those two boxes in the corner? Like, <laughs> nah, nah, look, the argument was <laughs> we ain't about. We got shit yet. He, exactly, he, exactly. See, he, he, drink, he drinks, I, I'm not going to say the brand because they got to pay, but he drinks <laughs> while we work. Me, I smoke, so I'm like, hold on. If I can't smoke, you can't drink. And, I, and when you so said that, I said we go back fine. and forth, so he like, but he did, he did. Uh, he did check me on that, and I was good because after a while, I was like, yeah, like, you gassing yourself up. And he, but what is it that you really have going on? So, and he came to me later, and he so was like, yeah, so yo, that you was know good. You were right. You were <laughs> absolutely right. I'm like, exactly. And only bosses here, only bosses, everybody's the boss of what they know how to do best. That's it. And that's the thing. I, I don't get involved in him writing. I don't get involved with his shenanigans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's it, character. He's working yeah. on his character. You know what I mean? So, nah, I'm not working on my character. Yes. We don't, we, yes. Everybody Ray, stay, yes. everybody stay, stay in character. Yeah. Every, everybody stay in their lane. And that's the thing. Everybody respects each other lane, man. Yeah. I, don't, I don't go to him and be like, yo, you got to do this when you... That ain't my lane. That's not what I'm great at. Everybody's be you know do what they are great at. We don't well, ego. I we don't ego, no ego. I would say this. No egos. A, Check boss, you a boss is only as great as their team. Right. Definitely. And that's that's it. So, who's really the boss? The team or the actual person who gets their head chopped off when shit fucks up? <laughs> you oh, know you, know you have a great team. Yeah. Are you saying this now? Is this kind of <laughs> your? Is this you like making amends for earlier when you were shitting on your whole team publicly? Yeah, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't say you guys weren't great at your jobs. I just said you were pieces of shit. That's <laughs> uh, different. Hey, listen. <laughs> I call them pieces that's of shit all the time. Hold on. Every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. I You're great at what you do. Fuck off. <laughs> do, we, do we have a date? Do we have a date for season two untitled? January. January. Jan, January two, we don't have a exact date, but it's definitely coming in, in January. January. Yeah, yeah, coming in January. And once again, we did the deal with title just because the broader the audience. You know what I mean? They had, I think, like a million subscriptions now. So yeah. it's crazy the response that we get for so many people calling us like, yo, we watching no title. Like, what? <laughs> so that's kind of dope. So we just want to make sure that People outside of Brooklyn, people outside of our areas, people in other countries who had title, they we can, you know, become fans of other people. And from other after places. it's exclusive on title for seven days, you can get it other places. Just, as well. Yeah. You'll uh -huh. be still be yeah, able to yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like like I said, you know, we definitely didn't want to alienate our day one viewers. Yeah. So just like with everything we do, you know, we structured the deals in a way that everybody can get the opportunity. Well, look, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Um, you guys got a lot of work ahead of you and a lot of tough decisions. It's not going to be easy. I'll be here. That's what we got you for, baby. No, nah, you ain't got me. <laughs> you ain't got me. <laughs> you got your you number? Got, Come you on. Got my phone number. Yo, guess what? How many times I done called you and asked you about situations? 150,000. <laughs> hey, what you think, man? <laughs> but, that's, but honestly, that's even smart, too, because, it, it, I mean, I know Ebro sincerely likes you guys, but that endears you to someone and not just yeah. called to ask for favor. Mm -hmm. But ask for ask for advice because right, he's a he's a resource. Yeah, I'm, that's the great thing with us. Like even the situation with me and Styles. Look, I know what I know, but I also what makes me smart is I know what I don't. That's know. That's the smartest thing. You understand? So a lot of times we'll go to meetings. I just sit there and listen, and then when we leave, and if I don't know, I'll be like, Yo, Teddy. You know, I, I tell Te Teddy don't like to be on camera. I'll be like, Yo, Teddy, what you think? And if he don't know, he'll call. Like we got great friends. We talk to Chaka, Beehive, any one of them. Like. We'd, we'd make phone calls like, yo, what you think first before we even yeah. make a move. We're not thing. rushing in anything. It's and the that's the key. Thing. Never rush to your success. Fool's rushing. You, know, you don't got to rush. It's we, don't, we, don't, we, don't chase pay, we don't chase money. That's what it is. Because I believe when you chase money, you're going to trip and fall. Yo, Ebro, I did all those records, man, and went broke. I hate when you start trying to kick knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> went broke. <laughs> house of kicking knowledge. House of foreclosure. And, you know, God got an a, a awesome way to kind of make you sit and be patient and wait for something great to come. And these guys came in my life, and I, got, I, I inherited a new set of brothers, man. And just being patient and taking your time, having the right conversation, and not being afraid to change your friendships, man. Because sometimes people think because you're friends forever. That's one thing we always talked about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Time don't mean nothing. 
And if you could you connect with a person, real you could connect with a person tight enough, y'all can build, especially when y'all got the same vision, y'all running after the same thing, man. Building, so big up to God, man. But b- people forget that the word building means progress. Yeah. It means you're actually going somewhere. You're not stagnant mm-hmm. when you're building, right? And a lot of times people be like, yo, I've known you a long time. We used to build together. Well, that building fell apart. Yeah, obviously you know it was the building wasn't <laughs> right. So <laughs> the foundation was wrong. And when people are gonna hit you with the you've changed, then you need to get comfortable with being Say saying yeah. yes. No, Say yeah. get comfortable with hey, this bro. Hold on. A lot. Hold on. A lot. Hold on. See, that's the thing too that we go through it sometimes too. It's like I watch those um C Styles and Mo, right? Me and Mo, we've been cool, but I don't get mad at their relationship because right now we in a different route. So whoever could get you there that knows more, that's supposed who you you built with. You understand? Yeah. Some some people don't get it. It's like the friend is your friend's still gonna be a friend. Just understand it's a new journey. If they were really your friends, they wouldn't yeah, mind still you change. Yeah. They want yeah. you. Yeah, change. but I was about to say, like, my thing is it's not that I change, it's just that you haven't. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we, we lost. Yo, a Miz, few. you trying to kick knowledge? Nah, I never. That's I <laughs> I leave that knowledge. to Mo. I leave that to Mo. Yo, you change. <laughs> I like <laughs> Hey yo, money and violence season two. Thank you. Coming Thank you, everybody. Congratulations.